meeting to order Office of Emergency Services. We can't take action, but we certainly go through your agenda and when other folks come in, we'll, uh, we won't repeat ourselves, but we'll ask them to prove what we're talking about. So go ahead, Brian. Understood, thank you. Uh, do we, we can't even prove the minutes, can we? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, number one, request to uh, approve the revisions that we made to the Warren County Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan. Um, this particular update basically was phone numbers and uh, a few items like that. If you want to see exactly what was changed, if you go to the back of the resolution, which is uh, page three, you'll see we updated names, updated the list of plans, some typos, and we added a branch to our EOC operations scenario. What were we doing? Nothing. You can't approve. I know. Okay, that's good, Brian. Next. All right, second was for travel for myself to uh, attend the Interoperable Communications, uh, they call it a symposium in Syracuse. This is the group that hands out all the money for the um, communications projects, and they have this symposium once a year. And this is where we all go and talk about what's going on and how it's happening. Anybody have any questions on travel? Mr. Brock? No questions? <laughs> okay. I'll keep my hand down. No, no, no. no. I, I, know, uh, I know we already asked Brian if there's uh, funds in the budget. There's funds in the budget for everything. Yeah, you'll see all but one of my requests for travel today is um, the only things that we take out of the budget is our normal gasoline for travel. Okay. Um, the state or the federal government pay for the lodging. Okay, number three? Number three, uh, also need to attend the Intelligence Liaison Officer Conference, which also will be in Syracuse. Um, this is the organization that where I take and I go out to the local fire and EMS people and discuss Homeland Security issues. We have to be refreshed in that each year. Okay, number four? Number four, uh, travel for uh, Deputy uh, Director Hirsch to attend the 2017 National Homeland Security Conference in Buffalo. This conference is held all over the United States. This is the first time it's been held anywhere near us without having to do a lot of major travel. It's going to be in Buffalo. And uh, Amy was actually asked to participate as one of the uh, leads, one of the track leads to actually help operate this conference. So her registration <coughs> fee has been covered. The only cost that we would have for her is her lodging, which is $428, which we do have in our travel budget. Okay. Any Number questions five? on the first ones? Number five. Number five. Um, we need to amend our existing contract with the Glens Falls Fire Department. They provide our cause and origin fire investigation services. Uh, per a letter from them, they have asked for an increase in what they fee, uh, what uh, what they charge us per hour for to provide that service. And um, it hasn't changed since 2006 when we first did that contract. Right. And you can see there where they've changed uh, the dollar amount. You want to just explain to anybody who has any questions about what they do for us? The cause quick. and origin team is um, every fire has to be investigated. If the local fire chief does not accept that and does not want to, you know, if he knows what it was, the homeowner says, yeah, I dropped a can of gasoline. Okay, that's it. That's what he can put on his report. If he doesn't know what caused the fire and he can't figure it out, then he's going to call for someone that has to do that. You can't put in a report without an investigation. So, uh, Warren County has a contract with Glens Falls. They maintain between 10 and 12 investigators that have to be up to date all the time. The contract says when we call them, <coughs> no matter when it is, they will send two investigators. And we pay basically the backfill. When they call, when we call for investigators, we pay whatever it costs the city of Glens Falls per this rate to backfill that position while they're gone so that they have the correct number of people on duty. So basically, we're, we're paying their payroll. We don't pay any other expenses, but uh, we do have to pay the payroll for when they're doing that work for us. Question, were, were they uh, involved with uh, the fire that occurred on Ridge Road where the garage was? That, uh, mm. and were they also involved in, I think there was an incident in Lake Georgia where uh, there, there was some dispute in the, the village of Lake Georgia. There was some dispute, uh, uh, some issue whether it was arson. Uh, I believe the owner of the property uh, in the Lake George case ended up within a 
potential lawsuit via the insurance company down in Albany. Uh, yep. So we do end up being involved in that, and there are times when the investigators get subpoenaed, and when they do, we pay that also. We pay their hourly rate. Um, you'll see that listed there. That we pay their hourly rate uh, for them to be covered, or in other words, to fill their position at the city if they happen to be working that day, and uh, we have to pay for that. You're happy with the services in terms of what they do? Yes. Yes. The important thing is we really have no alternative. Um, there's uh, years ago we had a volunteer uh, a cause and origin team made up of volunteers that had gone through all the training and it reached a point where there just wasn't enough people to cover the calls uh, the same two or three guys were having to take all the calls and they weren't getting paid anything they weren't even getting mileage so uh, this works better for us we know that when we call somebody's going to come okay any other any questions? questions any other questions on that Okay, we're going to number six. Number six, this is a uh, just a uh, budget transfer from 2015 to 2016 for some of the hazmat funds that we're carrying over. Okay, $3,911.60. I'll ask Brian to stay around. If somebody uh, comes in, then we'll try to get approval for the uh, resolutions. Are there any other questions on Brian's agenda? Yes, Supervisor Soko. Okay, I know Rachel was supposed to be here and then she had to go teach. Oh. Teach your children well. <coughs> Anything else? He said Gerard. Okay, oh, Gerard. we'll go to the next uh, next uh, agenda. <coughs> sure. That's you, Sean. And uh, again, we'll have to wait to our fifth wheel gets here so we can uh, approve the minutes <laughs> we can't uh, I tried to anoint Dennis but they won't let me go ahead go ahead Chuck. Uh, we have a relatively short agenda uh, item A is a request a resolution to amend the county budget to reflect insurance recoveries from two motor vehicle accidents uh, total amount of the insurance recoveries is nine thousand six hundred seventy dollars and twenty two cents Okay. Recent recent accidents? I uh, within the last month and a half. Wow. Okay. Um, item B: Request permission to send Sergeant William Gerard to attend the Civil Supervisors Training Conference in Saratoga Springs, New York. It's from May 15th to the 17th. The uh, cost to attend the training is $300, and that's within our training budget. And the money's in your budget, right? Yep. Okay. Next. Item C: Request permission to send Lieutenant. Peter D. Fiore, Sergeant Robert Smith, Officer Jesse Wittenberg, Officer Kevin Ordway, Officer Terry Combs, Officer Kevin Yandon, and Officer Brandon Comer to attend the 2017 New York Tactical Training Conference in Verona, New York from April 25th to the 27th. The cost should be around $3,372. That cost is going to be paid out of our asset forfeiture money. Okay, any questions on this travel? Is that usually, the, is that the Merck team or what do you... It's for the emergency response team. Yeah. Any questions? Next. Item D is request permission for a new contract with Taser International to acquire what's commonly known as tasers for the law enforcement division. Copy of the contract is attached. We don't use them now, right? Or do we? The Sheriff's Office has never had tasers. We're probably one of the few agencies in this area that does not have them at this time. And you got your policies and plans on place. We have reached out to other agencies, and we probably have no less than 20 policies right now that we're reviewing so we can craft our own policy. You would need any uh, people to try them out on? Yeah, you you want to volunteer? <laughs> oh, I wasn't thinking of myself. But <laughs> <laughs> I think the rest of the committee that's not here, though, maybe should go over. <laughs> you know? Okay, but everything's covered. You'll have everything covered. Right, and that was budgeted through the budget process last year, so it is in our budget to take care of it. Okay. Uh, Next item is item E, request to increase non-union part-time salaries for the commissary clerk and the security officers. It was brought to um, our attention that when a resolution was done through the board that the salaries were not correct, and the backup for that is attached to this packet that I provided. Hey, I know we did all the part-time salaries. It was a mission in the budget time, so we'll take care of it when uh, everybody get here. Any questions about that? 
Peter? Oh, I just had a quick question. Yes. On, the, on that automobile accident, the, uh, the uh, 3670 dollars and 22 cents. Mm -hmm. Is that what was recovered, or was that, that was the damage to the vehicle? That was what we were paid by the insurance company. This is two separate accidents, and one accident, one of our patrol officers was stopped in traffic up by the outlets here. He got rear-ended by a pickup truck. Um, that was a larger recovery. And another accident, one of our patrols um, struck a deer. The deer did damage to the front of the car, did damage to the side of the car, and that was the other recovery. Do you know what our, is there a deductible on the We have a $500 deductible when it's our accident. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I just wondered uh, if you could update us on the cameras, body cameras, are you guys still? Yeah, we, okay. Sean shot has been testing a lot. I hope you take his time on that. I didn't want to jump into it because, as you know, every month the uh, software is changing. It could get very expensive. So we've been taking our time on it. We've, we've been looking at them for probably close to a year and a half, maybe even two years. Um, in that course of time, the technology is constantly changing. Um, we're also seeing articles coming out where agencies that had jumped into getting body cameras had jumped into paying for cloud storage, which is truly where the most expensive component exists, are now getting out of body cameras because they can't afford to maintain them. They can't afford to maintain the storage. Um, I know in the state of New York that if you seek grant money, they won't even pay for cloud storage. It's something they don't want to get involved with. So you have to have secure servers on site or you have to make arrangements to have a secure server someplace. Um, <clears throat> I know some of the agencies around us have gone to them. We're constantly looking at them. We currently have two at the office that are in testing. So I foresee it that we will be going to them. It's just we have to find the best fit for the sheriff's office and one that's you know, going to fit us financially. It's, it's not a uh, cheap endeavor by any means. Yeah, I've seen articles where the technology is, is changing. It. They're getting smaller and better resolution. And much also, also, Sean, why don't you give a little update on the towers, the tower in Warrensburg, which is working fine. I listened last night. Looks like it's operational. Sorry, I had to knock on wood when you said that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> as you're aware, we, uh, we erected two radio towers. One is up on Maggie's Road um, in town of Warrensburg. The other, we co-located equipment over on Route 9N over across almost from the town, town center. The towers were up and they were supposed to be on last fall. There's been one delay after another. Just when you think you get past one hurdle, something else would arise. When the towers were turned on back in December, um, there was a problem. And the best way I can describe it is every one of these towers emits a big circle. And where these circles cover each other, um, there were problems. The best way to explain it is that <clears throat> the existing transmitter sites, which are uh, Prospect, Gore, Hague, and the Municipal Center, are using a different version of a computer card inside these radios. When they put the new sites in, they have a newer version of this computer card. That card apparently somehow functions a little bit differently. I'm not the technician, but from what they explain, there's a little bit difference in the timing. And when they turned it on, it was on for about 12 hours, and we realized that it was really detrimental to what was going on. It was uh, destroying the radios. It was nobody could talk, nobody could hear in these areas where there was this overlap because the timing was off so much. As of yesterday, uh, I think yesterday's the first full day that we've been able to have Warrensburg on the air on all frequencies. And um, as I notified the uh, county administrator, uh, we were looking for feedback within the first 24 to 48 hours. If there are problems, we need to know about it right away. Um, we always send out patrols to do radio tests to make sure that these towers are up and running. Um, <clears throat> so with all that said, the vendor came to us and said that, you know, if you want to make all these cards the same, it's about a $20,000 investment. I'm not anxious to spend another $20,000. I think that if they did their homework, they should come up with a way to make what we've already paid for work. With that said, they've got Warrensburg working, and they didn't buy the new cards. They, they, there's some sort of a process that they implemented up there to make it work. I'm hoping they can do the same thing over in Luzerne and we can get that online in the next next few days. And then the next tower will be in Stony Creek? Yes, we're going to put it right behind the uh, town hall. 
I've asked to have a meeting with the county attorney, uh, with Supervisor Thomas, to set up an MOU for the use of the property, and so we can move forward with the uh, the process to get that tower done. As I had mentioned in the, I think the last committee meeting, we did an application for grant money to the New York State Dormitory Authority right. through Senator Little's office, and we were awarded a half a million dollars to erect two more towers. And we know one of those towers is going to be in Stony Creek. Okay, good. Okay, now that uh, Mr. McDonald is here, what's the record <laughs> note at 9.20 for a 9 o'clock meeting? I uh, was tied up in a meeting on Falls. I apologize. That's fine. Uh, Supervisor McDonald, can you take a quick look at these agendas? We're on the Shures agenda now. Yeah, if you have any right. questions, we've vetted all the vetted information, all and uh, <laughs> I'd like a motion to approve the Shures uh, agenda. If you want to look Sheriff's at it first. Okay, I'll move for the... All, all five items. One, two, three, Motion five. by Supervisor Bramer, second by Supervisor Simpson. Any discussions? Good guy. Supervisor Good guy. McDonald? Trust you guys. <laughs> you know, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, now we'll go back to OES. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Sean. Brian had a, a six, six item agenda. Everything was vetted, some travel. <laughs> <laughs> a contract amendment for the city of Glens Falls. Uh, budgeted travel. Yeah, all budgeted <laughs> travel, yes. Any uh, any questions? Motion. motion by Supervisor Simpson, second by Supervisor Brock to approve all six items on the OES. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I need a motion to approve the previous meeting's uh, minutes. Supervisor Brock, Supervisor Simpson approve the minutes of the prior uh, committee meetings. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any other questions for these two committees? All right. Yes? Did you have your hand up? Sure. Well, I got an email from Rachel and a couple others. I'm not sure. Do you guys want to discuss the animal control? The what? Did you see those emails, Sean? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't think we were going to discuss that today. No, it's not today. didn't want to discuss that today. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Huh? Thank you. I think that they're going to actually bring that up at Health and Human Services. Okay. Is that the SPCA? Yeah. Yes. Okay. At 1030. Well, should we be here for that or what? Should I be if you would like to be. I well, I don't, I don't have to be. I, I, I was sent the email. I said I'd be more than happy to discuss it. So either they do or not. I'm not prepared to discuss it. I think. Okay. I wasn't under the impression we were discussing it today. At all. At all. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Um, motion, to motion to adjourn by Supervisor Bramer, second by Supervisor Brock. Okay, Dennis, you're up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs>